This video is going to introduce you to MQ's uniform cluster capability. This is a capability that builds on top of a number of existing MQ features to build a truly active, active MQ deployment, giving you the ability to workload balance your application instances across multiple running active queue managers, distributing the messages and evenly distributing the workload from the point of view of those consuming and those producing applications. Now it builds on a number of existing capabilities within MQ, MQ clustering, CCDTs, command channel definition tables, auto reconnect, all these features come together to give you one overall solution. But it also brings in something extra, this new uniform cluster capability. So I'm going to take you through as an example a very, very simple system to, to make this clear to you. The picture in the middle of this screen is depicting what we're going to do. We have three queue managers, queue manager one, two, and three, and they're configured into something called a uniform cluster. So if we just look, we can see we have three running queue managers. Now it's a simple bit of configuration to make these, take them from being a standard MQ cluster, which allows communication between them, to being something called a uniform cluster, in which case there's a lot more information sharing, there's a lot more handshaking and a lot more um, cooperation between them. And we'll see how that benefits in just a minute. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, multiple instances of an application connecting in. Now, this is all trying to achieve a always available active-active solution, which means I can't rely on one single running queue manager to provide all my availability or my scalability, because at some point I'm going to have to restart those queue managers, whether it's for maintenance um, or failures or whatever it happens to be, and at that point my system becomes unavailable. So really what I want to have is multiple active running systems, distinct queue managers, which then give me a messaging capability that my applications can connect to unaware of the underlying multiple queue managers that are actually providing the service. Likewise, I can't rely on a single instance of an application. For this to be a truly always available solution, I have to have multiple instances of the application connecting in to provide that availability in the event of instances of the application fail, or I want to scale past the uh, capability of a single instance. So what you're going to see is multiple instances of that same application connecting in. And the uniform cluster brings a unique capability, which is that ability to ensure that those instances are always evenly distributed across all those running queue managers. And that's overcoming uh, inconsistencies from workload balancing, it's overcoming inconsistencies from operations like stopping and restarting queue managers, changing the number of queue managers. You'll see with all those things, the uniform cluster ensures that those instances of the application are evenly distributed. And that's vitally important in a messaging system because you want to make sure you're getting full capability from that underlying um, runtime. Also, you want to ensure that all the messages are being processed. And because with this, this is active, active, queue managers, still individual messages are going to particular queue managers. They are being workload balanced across them. That's why you need your applications spread across all the queue managers in this cluster. Right, so that's the background. Let's actually um, show through a demonstration. I have the queue managers configured, and what we're going to do is we are going to kick off a number of instances of the application. So that green box is representing the application. I'm going to kick off slightly more than that. I'm going to kick off, say, 45 instances of that application. What you're going to see in those three terminals at the bottom of the screen is you're going to see an entry for each connection that comes in to each individual queue manager. So they're arranged underneath queue manager one, two, and three. Now, we're using a client channel definition table, a CCDT, to randomly distribute these connections across all three. The, queue the applications itself don't need to know that there happens to be these three queue managers under the cover. They are just connecting to any QM which effectively is a queue manager group that says, just connect me to one of them. Now, when that happens, it's quite a random process. So sometimes you get an even distribution, but more often than not, you get a slightly skewed distribution because it is just random. So what we're going to see is we're going to see those entries come in across them. And as predicted, we saw a random distribution. It's not particularly even, but that's just down to chance. What is happening at the moment now is both queue managers are actually talking amongst themselves because they're a uniform cluster and they are exchanging information about the various different running instances of the application. And here you just saw, in the top right hand, you saw an indication that a number of those connections got 
moved from one key manager to another. And in those bottom terminals, you can now see that we're an even distribution, 15 connections across all three key managers. Now, despite that top right hand terminal showing you that those reconnects were happening, the applications themselves were completely unaware of that being the case. Those applications are using auto reconnect with MQ, which means under the covers to the application, the application logic is just connecting and then you know, producing and consuming messages. But within the MQ layer, it is saying, I'm going to move that connection from being connected to Q Manager 3 to Q Manager 2. And at that point, it gets uh, reconnected without the application seeing it. Now, obviously, this uh, will have some impact on the application from the point of view of they've moved where they've connected to. So it doesn't suit all application styles. Some applications um, are uh, good with this from the point of view of they are written in a very stateless way and that I can connect to any of those key managers. Some applications are relying on all the messages going to one location. Maybe that's for message ordering, maybe that's because I'm looking for a particular message, maybe a particular reply message. And those scenarios you would have to take more care over. But in the case where the applications don't mind where they've reconnected into, you can see that they've been automatically rebalanced with no impact to the application itself. So that was nice. It overcame the inconsistencies of just leaving it to chance as to how I've distributed my applications. What's possibly even nicer is if we say um, end one of those queue managers. So I'm going to end queue manager three, the one over on the right. Now at that point, those applications themselves, or the MQ client, detects that and rebalances or reconnects those applications to a different queue manager. And as luck would have it, it did it nice, e nice and evenly across those two queue managers. And it's going to run like that continually while queue manager three is down because the uniform cluster knows that it just has those two queue managers running and that's where those, dis those applications need to be distributed across. The interesting one is when I restart that queue manager. So um, for this scenario, we've just applied maintenance, we've automated that, we bring the queue manager back up a few seconds later. Um, and at that point, without the uniform cluster, the connections that we see on queue manager one and two would just stay there because the, the applications themselves have got no logic in to say, you know, reconnect when I see another queue manager become available. And, you know, operationally, you could go in and move some of those connections across, but that's quite a, a lot of effort for you. However, with the uniform cluster in place, I restart my queue manager, at which point, here we see the other queue managers detect it and they move some of those connections across. And we can see that it's moved uh, uh, a good proportion of those uh, applications across and now it's just done the last little bit of rebalancing. Or a, a, you know, it's almost level and then it will just fine tune it over time to always make sure that we've got a nice even distribution. So that shows that with the uniform cluster in place, I don't have to worry from an operations point of view or from an application point of view pinning myself to individual queue managers to ensure that I've got uh, an even distribution or overcoming those operational tasks like restarting queue managers or recovering from failures, which means I can really start to build an application which is decoupled from the underlying fact that I happen to have multiple queue managers running. I really can just connect to a group and just leave the, uh, the MQ uniform cluster to do the hard work under the covers. So that was running with three queue managers. Also, another scenario, because say we're doing this both for availability but we're also doing it for horizontal scaling, we might go to a point where we want to bring in a fourth queue manager. Now, if we bring in a fourth queue manager, normally I would have to bring in a fourth queue manager, I would have to configure it to be um, the same as the other queue managers, to find all the different resources, make sure they, they lined up, um, and then start to move my applications across. Now, this is where I'm going to show you uh, another new capability. This is just coming out in MQ914, which is the ability to make that configuration of these multiple key managers much more consistent or, or easier to make consistent. So I have a, a, a script called add queue manager 4. Now I've just done this because it makes it much easier than me trying to type this and, and remember exactly what I need to do. But it's quite a simple script and we'll go through it one step at a time. We'll just see what we're doing. So first thing we're going to do we're going to create a queue manager. So we're going to create queue manager 4. Now, that, if you look in the top left hand screen, then you can see we've got a standard create MQM command, as um, we always use with MQ. There's a difference here, though. It's got some extra um, attributes um, to it, which you may not have seen before. And this is because in 914, you now have the ability to be able to say, when you create a queue manager, whenever I start this queue manager, I want to pull in definitions from 
predetermined uh, locations or predetermined files. And I've configured this to say, when I start the Key Manager, I want to pull in a set of any file definitions, um, and also I want to pull in a set of MQSC commands. And that's the II um, attribute and the IC attribute. I've also got, and I actually, because I want to pull in a, say, a common set of commands, which I want to use for all of my queue managers, and this is exactly how I configured queue managers one, two, and three when I set this demo up. I want to make sure that I can use the same script. And in MQ, there's some things that you need to have specific to the environment of a particular queue manager. So, for example, the connection name of your channels, your cluster receiver channel, for example, you need to be able to um, have that unique for each queue manager. So, with that, the con name for that. So, you can pass that in as an environment, um, and that then gets embedded into the commands that we've defined. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that and that's going to create that queue manager for. So that's created the queue manager. I haven't started it yet. What I need to do before the applications can start being distributed across queue manager 4 as well, I need to update the CCDT. This client channel definition table, um, it's a just a JSON file which defines how do I get to queue managers 1, 2, 3 and now 4. So I'm going to I've got a new version of that which happens to have the entry for four, Key Manager 4 in, so I'm going to replace the existing one with that later one. So this is actually being pulled in dynamically by the application. So the applications were just configured to use the CCDT when they connect. If they get told to reconnect, they will also dynamically pull in that CCDT. I don't have to restart the applications to start using this particular JSON file. So I've done that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bit of, make a bit of space on my screen. I'm going to move these terminals along for Key Manager 1, 2, and 3, and then I'm going to start up a new one for Key Manager 4. So here we go on the far um, um, edge of the screen, we've got Key Manager 4 listening, and it's obviously got no connections because that Key Manager is not running. So now I'm going to start up the Key Manager. So we start the Key Manager, and at this point, because it's been configured the same, it's been added into the uniform cluster, you can see almost immediately some of the connections get moved across. And as time will go on, more of those connections will get distributed, here we see, and to the point where we effectively get the even distribution of our connections across all four. So hopefully that demonstrates how I can take a set of queue managers, I can perform operations on them, I can extend the set of them in this uniform cluster. And the applications who are just simply connecting to uh, the group of queue managers rather than a specific one, all get managed by MQ itself. They don't have to know that this is going on, they don't have to see that this is going on, this is all being done outside and unaware of the application layer. So I can start to really build very, very highly available active, active MQ solutions, which I can horizontally scale without the applications needing to worry about that. That's all being taken care for care um, by MQ. So with that, I'll stop. Um, and I hope you go uh, and, and follow the links that I'll put in this uh, video so that you can actually uh, read up more on the concept of uniform clusters.